In this Framer tutorial, you will learn how and when to use stacks or frames, positioning like sticky and fixed, and sizing like fill and fit content. We will round it all off with a practical example of a card layout. But before anything else, let's talk a bit about frames. In frames, we can take our elements and position them whichever way we want. We can pin them to the sides like this, which means that if we change the size of our canvas, they're gonna be pinned to the canvas like this. Now, if you wanna follow along in the same working file that I'm using, check out the link in the description below. We can also make sure that our frames are set to fixed so that whenever we scroll, they're gonna be fixed to a certain position on our canvas. In this example, in the top right, we can do this for whichever element we want and we can pin them however we want. So if we want this to be centered on the canvas, I can pin it to the center here. I can set it to fixed. And if we play it, it's also gonna be fixed when we scroll. Now, if we jump over to stacks, you can see that the elements inside of our stack has another type of positioning called relative. This means that it's just relative to the parent stack. So the parent, which is in this case, the desktop container here, is determining the positioning of these elements. With a stack, and by the way, if you don't have a stack, you just have a frame, you won't see this menu here. If we click minus, this goes from a stack to a frame. If we wanna go back to a stack, we just hit plus. In this menu, we can change the direction of our elements. We can change the distribution of our elements. We can change the alignment of our elements. We can say that our elements, if they are too wide, are gonna wrap. This is only seen if we go to direction horizontal in this case, where we see that this text wraps to the second row. We can change the gap between our elements and we can change the padding which is the distance between the corners of our container to the elements, just by making small tweaks in this sidebar. Now in our stacks, we can still change the type of positioning that we want. So if we want something to be absolutely positioned, we'll go here and set it to be absolutely positioned. And now you can see that we can change it free form, just like with the frames. You can also see that everything that has the relative positioning still stays the same. It still adheres to the parent container. We can also go back to this item here, change it from absolute to sticky. And sticky is a bit different. Instead of being fixed to a certain position all the time, sticky kind of sticks. Now for sticky to work, we have to make sure that the parent container, all parent containers, have overflow visible. I'm gonna increase the height of this container a bit and I'm gonna play the prototype and you'll see that this image now sticks to the top when we reach the image. You can change the pixels to the top here. So let's say 24 pixels. Now, if we play it, you can see that it sticks to the top when the image has 24 pixels to the top. Now let's change this back to relative and let's look at sizing options. If we take this heading, for example, and we go to the top here, you can see that the width of this is set to fit. But let's start with fixed. If we set a fixed width, this width is always gonna be the fixed width that we set. So this one is gonna be 665 pixels. Whatever we do to our container, it's gonna stay the same width. Now, if we change this to relative, this is now gonna be a percentage of the width. And to illustrate this better, I will change the direction to horizontal. This headline here is now 62% of the width. If we take all the elements and go from fixed to relative, and this is now 40, this is 45, this is 62, obviously that is more than 100%, which results in this it is pushed outside of our container. If we want to solve this, we can just take all the elements and change the width to fill. Now the stack is gonna make sure that the items fill the available space inside of the container. 
if we want to tweak the width, we can go here. We can change from one FR, one fraction, to two fractions. That is gonna be double the amount of space that one fraction takes up. 0 0.5, can you guess it? 50% of one fraction. Now fill is only available when using stacks. And this is part of the power of stacks. The stack takes care of the spacing and the structure for us. Now, if we target these elements here and change from width fill to fit content, these elements are gonna take up the exact amount of space that they need. And this might not be the best solution for this case, but if we want to create a button, for example, so if I change this copy to button, I make this into a stack. Now, if this stack has fit content, I can easily use padding to create a button without having to do any extra work. You can see that the stack here adapts to the inner content. So the space of the button text here is the determining factor. If we zoom out a bit and we change the height here to viewport and it says 100 VH, that means that this button is gonna take up 100% of the device height. So if we change this to 50, you guessed it, it's gonna take up 50% of the device height. So in the end, when do we use stacks? Because obviously they are very structured and rigid. You can't really move things around the way you want to. I would say that you can start with frames when you want to be free in your design. Then once you've reached something that you want, you have a structure that you want, then you can turn everything into stacks so that you easily can start playing around with the different settings that you have. So before the end of the tutorial, let's build out a card layout with a stack just to show you the power of this. First, I'll go to the button here. I'll change the padding in the top and in the bottom, change the rounding a bit, maybe make the color a bit more fun, change the color of the button text, maybe even change the text, click me. Now I'm gonna wrap all of these items into a stack. I'm gonna add some padding to the stack. I'm gonna take this image, change the width from fill to fixed, decrease the size a bit, give it some radius, target our card, increase the gap a bit, maybe 40. I'll go to width and say fit content because I want it to fit the content inside of the card here. I'm gonna give it a background color so that we can see what's happening gonna change the radius, decrease the vertical padding a bit. So maybe 24, maybe 16 in the top, 16 in the bottom, and whoops, the height was set to fixed. This one is also gonna be fit content. So now it adheres once again to the content within. Here we can see that 16 is a bit too small. So I'll change that to 40 again, and 40 in the bottom too. Now, what if we want many cards on a row? If I duplicate this and change the desktop stack here to horizontal direction, you can see that it pushes the content outside of the frame. How do we fix this? We go to these cards here and we change the width to fill. Now, something is still not quite right. And that's because the image here, or the images, are still set to fixed. So if I change the width here to fill again, you can see that they now adhere to the containers. If I duplicate it again, now we have a problem with the text. If we go to the text fields here, we go to width and change it from fit to fill, you can see that it now wraps. Now, if we want cards to wrap, in here, so when there is not enough space, then we can hit wrap, yes. If I create a new card and we take all of these cards, and maybe we say that each card's width is gonna be relative 33%. Now you can see that it wraps within the frame, but it's still ending up outside of the frame. Why is this? Well, our desktop frame here is still set to fixed in height. So if we change this to fit content, 
Now it works, but things aren't really centered. Why is that? Well, the stack distribution is set to end. So if we say centered, it centers everything. If we want to change the gap, we can go in here, change the gap. And this is how you can play around with stacks to make your interface super scalable. Now, if you want to learn how to use stacks to create responsive layouts, check out this video here. Until the next one, have a great life.